Um, what I'd like to ask you about is now, as you are the Monkey King, um, what's your daily practice? What do you, what do you practice? What do you like to do? Um, kind of, you know, a little snapshot, like, w what's your cultivation like these days? Okay. So, Paul, I've had the privilege to learn many arts and sciences uh, with you. Taoist meditation, Qigong. Um, I loved it when we would go and compare applications, yeah. sums that you were getting from B.P. Chan, mm -hmm. or you would ask me, you know, what is this application? How does mm -hmm. Master Liang think about this application? And, you know, you were, you were my first uh, Eight Inner Palms teacher, and, yeah. um, you know, Taiji Qigong. I've learned so many wonderful things from you. Um, what I'd like to ask you about is now, as you are the Monkey King, um, what's your daily practice? What do, you, what do you practice? What do you like to do? Um, kind of, you know, a little snapshot, like, w w what's your cultivation like these days? Okay. Well, it's changed drastically from years ago because of the mobility issues I have now, so I can't really do a regular Tai Chi form. So I do Chan's eight exercises in the chair. Mm -hmm. I do crane breathing, I do Tai Chi ruler. I do, with the actual ruler itself? Yes, with the ruler. Um, I do Tai Chi moves in a chair. Mm -hmm. so, so I do, I mean, obviously I've missed the whole body and the legs because that's pretty critical. And then probably my main practice is Reiki. Reiki? Reiki, yes. Have you been doing that for many years? Five years, over five years. So it's a new practice? It's quite new. Um, I'll be very honest, or should I be very honest? Of course, there's a camera in front of you. No, I, I don't mean to insult anyone, but I, well, it's just me I'm talking about. Anyway, I used to think that Reiki was sort of a dumbed-down form of chi healing. Mm -hmm. And then, as I studied it, and do the, there are certain internal cultivation you do every day with it, and I also studied in quite detail, whatever I could get, how it's actually taught in Japan. Mm. A lot of people don't know that Reiki is still, it, the people who mostly teach it in Japan are Westerners who have learned it in the States or learned it somewhere else. Because wow. the Japanese Reiki society is totally closed to Westerners. Oh. No Westerner can even become part of it. And even if you're Japanese, you, you need to be very carefully screened and vetted. Hmm. So nobody really knows the whole scope of teaching within the Reiki, the Gakkai, the study society. Hmm. But um, I found it's been amazing. I literally think it has saved my life on three or four occasions. Wow. Literally. And, um, you know, a lot of people think it's for healing or relaxing, and it is those things, but the real key in why I do it is the founder himself, when asked about, you know, what's Reiki, what's it for, he said, Anshin Ritsune in Japanese, Anshan Li Ming in Chinese, peaceful spirit and harmony with your heavenly destiny. So you really practice it for peaceful spirit and harmony with your heavenly destiny. So I do it for internal healing. I think it's helped my organs a great deal. And um, I am at peace. <laughs> that is, that's yeah. beautiful. So uh, you would agree with that founder? And of course I meditate. I mean, just like Zen meditation. That's, yes. That's an important part of it as well. And um, I heard that you're still writing, which I am excited, um, you know, uh, which is going to bring me into my next question, which is, um, would you please talk just a little bit about your book? You know, one thing that I, I remember with Master Leong is um, 
you know, if I asked him a question about a form or an application or a weapon or a history, you know, mm -hmm. he was very generous with me. He'd answer, mm -hmm. but sometimes he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Every time I asked about his book, he always answered. Uh -huh. I'd say, sir, I have a question about the book. Uh -huh. What? <laughs> to, and it was such a beautiful, because he told me yes. he put so much of his heart and soul yes. at Taiji into the book. So yeah. I'm asking you if you would just give our, our audience and listeners a little bit of insight into your book, Drawing Silk. Well, it, it started years and years ago. You remember the Tai Chi magazine? Yes. Marvin Small, I said. Yep. And I remember that when it was like a little... Eight it was a newsletter. Flip. Yeah, it was a little newsletter. Yes. Uh, so I contributed a couple of articles that were published there. And so then, whenever a certain Tai Chi topic would come up, I would just write a little article, and, and over the years he published a few of my articles when it became a regular magazine. And after a while I had a, a fair assemblage of articles, and I thought, well, I should just publish this for my students. Mm. So I really didn't think of having it be a commercial book, but it was a book of articles for my students. So that was the old one. You probably remember the, the big white one with the cover. I have one. A little design on Signed it. Signed by you. And so I, I got that published. Well, it wasn't published. It was self-published. And so I think I ordered 2,000 copies, and they delivered 30 <laughs> cartons of book. And so I, I basically sold them to students. And then every once in a while, a student would tell me, you know, I got this friend who's studying Tai Chi, you really love your book, would you send them on? And I did. And I thought, well, gee, maybe I could sell these. But they weren't really in a sellable format. And, and I brought them to bookstores, and bookstores said, we don't want these. The cover's bland and boring. A cover sells a book. And it's not a good size for the shelf, so you got to make a regular type of paperback. And in the intervening years, I had written some more articles, and then the second version of it came out as Drawing Silk. And, well, I'm thinking of adding to it. I've had things which have come into my head since. And well, there's the Taoist stories, which yes, are my the, particular uh, favorites in that book. Um, is there a fourth story coming out? Yes, it, it should be ready quite soon. And as I've told you and some other people, anything I know is in the stories. Beautiful. You can dismiss the rest of the book, but the real thing is the stories. Um, and by the way, I will put, um, I'll put a link in the description so you can uh, get Paul's book off of, uh, it's Amazon, right? Yes. Yeah. I'll put a link in there. Don't worry. You'll, you'll be able to get this amazing book. On some of the reviews, and well, one of the reviews in Amazon, this guy had a Chinese name, so probably a Chinese. He said he kind of said something along the lines: "The book's mediocre, blah blah blah." I don't, I don't reviews don't bother me, good or bad, whatever. But then he said, "And Mr. Gallagher has three Taoist stories that he seems to really enjoy." <laughs> and I thought that was a hook. I thought that was very very funny. Because to me, that's like, that's the good stuff right there. That's like the distillation of all your training and learning. But I did some, there were questions from students that I, I once asked the students, um, what are your like deep burning questions about Tai Chi training? And so they handed me, you know, little pieces of paper. And, and I thought about those, so I wrote one chapter about burning questions. Yes. One chapter, another favorite chapter I have is the Chinese etiquette, mm -hmm. where it shows a certain young man, not 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 this gentleman here, but <laughs> another certain young man who made every blunder in the book with the, uh, with the Asian masters. But little by little, I learned a few things. That Master Liang gave me some strict schooling on uh, Kirti, on the Chinese manners, oh. and um, yeah, I was a fellow blunderer. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, a bull in the Chinese uh, yeah, China yeah. shop. So 